Hello. Hi, uh, Stephen Redford. Yes. Yeah. Have a good day. Cheers, you too. Almost eight months after the launch of the Steam Deck and it's finally here. But was the newly rebranded docking station worth the wait and the $90 price tag, especially when we've had third party dongles and docks that have worked since the Steam Deck's launch in February? My initial reaction was, whoa, how much? But when you stop and think about it, I don't actually think it's that bad of a price. For starters, Valve has packaged the dock with the same 45 watt power brick that comes with the Steam Deck which means you can just set it and forget it. Considering a comparable 45 watt charger from Anchor sells for around $40 on Amazon, it starts to make the whole package look like a far better deal than at first glance, especially when you consider the level of support Valve offers and that firmware updates are neatly handled through SteamOS. In fact, the first time you plug your deck into the dock, you'll be prompted to update its firmware, the process was seamless and it took just a couple of minutes to complete. The dock itself is a lot smaller than I expected and is made of the same high quality plastic as the Steam Deck. Around back you'll find a DisplayPort 1.4 port, HDMI 2.0, a USB-C port for power, Gigabit Ethernet and three USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 ports. Docking the Steam Deck is as good an experience as it can be. The tolerances are very tight and it's a snug and sturdy fit. So no, your Project Kill Switch case isn't going to work here. The deck's USB-C port being on top of the device does mean it's not quite as seamless as the Switch's docking experience, and you'll find yourself hunting for the port to pop the dock's cable into. That cable is a great example of the attention to detail you get from official accessories though. The end of it is perfectly molded to the curve of the Steam Deck, and there's a nice 45 degree angle that enables you to get a good grip on it when you want to undock. It's not perfect, but it's the best solution we have with current hardware. I would like to see Valve add a second USB port on the bottom in future versions of their handheld though. There's really two main use cases for the Steam Deck dock that Valve is pushing. The first is to use the Steam Deck as what it is, a PC. And the second, and probably the main reason most people want to buy the Steam Deck dock, is to turn it into a kind of Nintendo Switch on steroids. I'm going to hand it over to Pete to give you some of his impressions on using the Steam Deck dock with his TV. Thanks, Steve. If you're anything like me, the number one hope for the Steam Deck docking station was to get as close to that Nintendo Switch style plug and play experience as possible. While I don't think docked mode has gotten there quite yet, if you're willing to do a little bit of tweaking, I think you can come pretty close, especially if you're playing the right game or if you're willing to make a couple compromises. When I first saw the Steam Deck docking station, I was immediately struck by how small it is. They're fitting a ton of tech in a small package. It's compact, sturdy, and perfect for travel. The Steam Deck fits really nicely in the dock itself, and even when I tried to shake or knock it over, it holds in place nicely. Though I hadn't really thought about it until I got my hands on the docking station, I think it's actually a great solution for tabletop mode. I'm looking forward to taking advantage of this when I fly out for my honeymoon next week. As you can see here, the dock holds the Steam Deck below the screen, so no risk of scratching by coming in or out at a weird angle. I've booted up a few indie games to see how they fare, and the base experience, with a little tweaking depending on the title, works well for the most part. I'd say it seems nearly on par with the experience of playing on Switch, but I'd imagine folks who are more patient about playing with settings can eke out an even better performance. I think the main difference here is stability. On Nintendo Switch, if a game is well optimized, the transition between handheld and docked mode usually feels seamless. With the Steam Deck, you're definitely going to need to play with settings to get things running the way you want them to while in docked mode. If you're one of the folks who like to use your Steam Deck as an emulator, this is seemingly a perfect solution. So far, everything I've tried ranging from Game Boy Advance to PlayStation 2 games has looked really good on my 4K TV with little to no adjustment. I think if you're looking for a perfect Game Boy player, you found it. Let's take a look at Jedi Fallen Order. 
This was the game that I used as a benchmark for the pre-patch docked experience, and while things aren't perfect, there's definitely been a noticeable and huge improvement. You can now get a true full screen experience, and I'd say a semi-stable 40 FPS, but it definitely doesn't feel as sharp as when I originally played the game on a PS4 Pro. It's just not going to be as sharp as what you're used to if you've played on a current gen console or a high end gaming PC recently. With a lot of tweaking, I was able to get what I think is a good enough experience. Admittedly, I'm not the best at playing with PC settings, so your mileage may vary, but there's still some work to be done before this feels like a true plug and play experience for the average player. And we know that that's what Valve really wants. I think if Valve can get this to the point where the deck can automatically optimize settings to give you the best possible experience for docked mode in the same way that it works for handheld mode, versus you needing to tweak it for yourself like I did, this will feel like the compromise that we want all Switch ports to feel like. At present, it feels like most games run better in handheld mode, and if you have access to a current gen console or a high end gaming rig, it's hard to imagine you choosing to play your games docked, at least for right now. That said, I'm fully confident that Valve will get there. The docked experience has come so far in just a few months. I think now that they're getting this thing out in the wild, it's only going to keep improving. Updates are already rolling out, and if the way that Valve has handled Steam Deck updates are any indication of what we can expect, I think the Steam Deck docking station will only continue to grow with the console. To talk a little bit more about functionality, I've spent the vast majority of my time in docked mode using a PS5 DualSense controller, and I really think it's a perfect solution for navigating the console. But for the purpose of this video, I picked up a cheap wireless mouse and keyboard from Logitech, and I think it might be a total game changer for me. Using the set with a lap desk that I usually reserve for my laptop, I was able to play proper PC games with a mouse and keyboard on my TV for the first time. Plus, it makes browsing desktop mode easier than ever before, and it has me thinking about the possibilities of using my Steam Deck as a media hub whenever I'm traveling. Before I sign off, Steve also wanted me to report back a bit on the experience of using the docking station's display port. I was able to easily connect the Steam Deck to one of my PC monitors in both gaming mode and desktop mode, and even though some people have reported glitches, audio output was no problem. In desktop mode, I tried daisy chaining monitors to no avail, but I was able to easily get a three screen setup going by just plugging in the other monitor directly via HDMI. Alright, that's all for me, let's kick it back to Steve. I think Pete is probably the same as 90% of Steam Deck owners. He's just looking for a simple docking experience for his TV, and he doesn't have too many things on his wish list. I'm perhaps in that other 10%, and when Valve announced that the dock was getting MST and FreeSync support when it went on sale, I was really excited by the prospect. Variable refresh rate would be a killer feature for the Steam Deck. AAA games often bounce between 40 and 60 FPS, and having the Steam Deck just tell the display what it should be displaying would make everything feel so much smoother. So as soon as the dock arrived, I plugged it into my TV and tried everything I could think of to get FreeSync working. I switched between HDMI's VRR mode and AMD FreeSync Premium on my TV. I set the output to 4K 60Hz or 1080p 120Hz. I made sure VSync in multiple games was turned off. I used my TV's gaming mode. I went into developer mode on the Steam Deck and turned on the hidden setting to allow external display refresh rate to be controlled by the Steam Deck, and nothing did the trick. But it turns out that FreeSync just isn't implemented yet, and I guess Valve forgot when they announced it. They've since put out a tweet that says, MST and FreeSync functionality still require work and we'll be shipping software and firmware updates soon. The dock specification on the website has also been updated with a couple of disclaimers, so I'm gonna have to wait and see if FreeSync will work with my display, and if VRR or MST support is something that you were hoping for, hold off on getting the dock for now. Okay, so VRR just isn't possible, at least for now. But I've got a 120 hertz display, so theoretically I should still be able to select 40 hertz for some of the more demanding AAA games. I do this fairly frequently in handheld mode thanks to the built-in control in SteamOS, but this is totally broken in docked mode at the moment. Thankfully Valve has hidden the control behind a toggle in developer mode, so unless you go looking for it, there's no risk of breaking anything. With the toggle on, you can go down to 40 hertz, but for some reason my display switches back to 4K despite me fixing it at 1080p in the settings, and sound stops working completely. Even then, it's not actually capping it at 40 hertz, and it seems to target 60. This is definitely something that could be fixed in software updates, but that becomes a theme with dock mode on the Steam Deck. 
As Pete mentioned, it's now possible to get resolutions higher than 800p if you go into a game's properties within Steam, but it will still default to that resolution and a 16 by 10 aspect ratio for a lot of games. Right now, the store's also just totally broken when Doctor displays at higher resolution than the Steam Deck. And there's some really weird oversights like the touchscreen's digitizer remaining active despite the screen being turned off when docked. And this means you can swipe and tap around without having any clue what you're touching. Then there's the little things that remind you it's not quite that console experience you're looking for. Like not being able to wake it with a Bluetooth controller. And of course that's because it isn't a console. As Valve keeps reminding people, the Steam Deck is a PC. And that's where the dock really shines. I've plugged in all manner of peripherals into this thing and they just work. A keyboard from 1989 with a weird adapter from 1999. A USB mouse, external drives, capture cards, and I've had no issues. What's really cool is that in desktop mode, you can opt to keep the Steam Deck screen on, so you can have a dual screen setup right out of the box. And navigating around the UI feels great. I've been able to set up an environment that feels familiar to me. I've developed Decky plugins on this thing using VS Code and building them with NPM. I've listened to Apple Music chatted on Discord. I've even booted up OBS to see if that worked. The experience here is exactly what you'd expect, and the dock really is the perfect station for your Steam Deck. You can leave all of your accessories plugged in and just unplug the deck when you want to game on the go. Of course, all of these accessories also work in gaming mode. If you're the kind of player who loves Sims or RTSs, then being able to plug in a monitor, mouse, and keyboard for that additional level of control is just invaluable. Overall, I think the official docking station does offer a fairly decent value. The included charger balances out the price when compared to third-party docks, but the $90 price will still be a sticker shock to many Steam Deck owners. Right now, though, it's a less than stellar experience in gaming mode, so it's hard for me to recommend the dock unless you're a serious tinkerer who's willing to put up with a lot of quirks and bugs. Personally, I am that kind of person. I'm willing to put it with a lot of bugs and quirks and features while Valve figures it all out. And I've been doing that since day one with the Steam Deck. I love it. I love all the tinkering. I love all the faffing. And it means I can get my entire Steam library on my TV. Or I can plug in a mouse and keyboard and play some of my favorite RTS games. Or program away on a new plugin for Decky. It's a really great experience if you can look past all the crud. But as always, you should never buy a product based on the promise of bug fixes or features in the future. But now I wanna hear from you. Did you buy an official dock or maybe a third party one? What do you think? What do you like and what do you dislike? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for making this video possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you all in the next one. Bye for now.